Hi, I'm Paul Germain, and welcome to another session of Smart Boating. You know, we do a variety of topics here on the show, and one of the ones that's the most fun is these summer outings, these summer events. And today we're in Meredith, New Hampshire, at the 40th Annual Antique and Classic Boat Show. And I'm joined here by Dennis Shower, and Dennis is going to tell us a little bit about it. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis, you've got a great day for a great show. Uh, can you tell people a little bit about ACBS, and can you tell them a little bit about the show that we're at today? Yeah, well, first of all, uh, we're glad to have you here. Uh, it's a spectacular day. It's unusual. Last year was a little bit tougher, uh, extremely hot. But today, we have literally a full house. We've got uh, approximately 80 boats here. We've got uh, about 25 vintage cars, we've, which we've added to add a little uh, a little more excitement to, to this venue. And uh, we expect this afternoon that there will be several thousand people milling about the docks. As far as ACBS, um, I'm the president of the New England chapter of the Antique and Classic Boat Society. There's about, at this point, uh, about 50 chapters around the country. Mm -hmm. This is the second largest oh, wow. and also the, the second oldest. Clayton uh, is is the, uh, the oldest. That's where this whole hobby began. But mm -hmm. We have an awful lot of boats. We've got uh, over 125 antique boats on this lake. Uh, it's a terrific resource for this kind of thing. And you know, for you to come here and, and, and do this, I think you've got the, the pick of the litter. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great overview, Dennis. So I think we'll get started and go see some boat owners. Terrific, let's okay. do it. Well, here's an interesting boat at the, uh, at the New Hampshire show owned by Tom Turcott at, uh, I think it's around 28 footer. Tom, can you tell us a little bit about this boat behind us? This is our 28 foot runabout model. It's modeled after a 1937. Same lines and hull design. Oh, yeah. But we've got modern uh, engines and controls and stuff in there that make it uh, much more user friendly. Oh, all right. When was this boat built? This was a 2011. Yeah. And what's, what sort of materials do you use to build it out of? African mahogany mm -hmm. over um, mahogany frames and the entire hull is skinned with quarter inch mahogany plywood okay. and then glued down and planked over the top of that is the African mahogany. Wow. So you net a three quarter inch hull uh -huh. so thickness. Very strong. Very strong. No more swelling and shrinking like the old boats. Tom, we got a nice looking shot showing the <laughs> foredeck and the interior of the boat. Can you tell us a little bit about Basically, the interior. You got a, an interesting steering wheel there, and you got some interesting aspects of the dash, too, right? Yeah, that's uh, modeled after the uh, styling that Garwood was doing in the 30s. Uh -huh. And uh, that's, a, that's a. The gauge cluster is a unique piece as well. Oh, it is. We're having those custom made, and that's what was in the boats in the 30s and 40s. Okay. So it, it keeps the style, you know. Right. Is, and uh, the banjo steering wheel uh -huh. and uh, the, the shifter still have the shifter in the floor which is where it was I see that yeah. even though there's not a mechanical linkage there anymore it's a cable but right. on in the surface it all looks and functions very well just like it used to now uh, I can I can pan the interior of the boat here a little bit and uh, what are we what are we looking at here what type of layout is this one here well this is this is the walkthrough. Uh -huh. Traditionally, that was a solid deck. Okay. And um, we opened it up so you could get between the cockpits. A little more accessible, yeah. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. you, and um, the cabinets on each side. Oh, well, that's a nice feature. And most people seem to like this better than the solid deck. Because you can okay. move from. Yes. And uh, just more comfortable and easier docking. All right. Well, because yeah. you can get from here right. to there, yes, okay. common sense kind of. Well, Tom, you make a variety of boats. This is another another uh, model that you make. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, here we have our str our streamliner, uh -huh. which is a combination of, of a utility and a runabout. Uh -huh. The engine's in the back, which allows you to move through the boat. And um, like I said, a utility, very yeah. roomy and very easy boat to use. That's yep. what we call it a utility, right? So, right. Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty boat. That was built in 1995. Oh, that long ago. Yep. All right. So properly it, maintained proper. one of these new boats, it can really last quite a long time, can it? Exactly. Well, Tom, we're focused on the interior of this uh, this utility boat. Uh, similar to the boat we looked at, it's got it looks like a 
a somewhat authentic steering wheel and some of the uh, some of the detail in here is really reminiscent of the really of the original boats, right? Yes. As you can see, very similar to the other boat. This is much much wider. The streamliner offers a wider boat. Uh-huh. Uh that would be the biggest difference, but the uh, the, the controls and the switches and the shifter and all that is all pretty period of the 1937 okay. Uh, model. Okay, and then if we pan the boat a little bit, like very comfortable seating. Yeah, you can easily fit eight to ten people in here. Wow, that's a big gang. So yep. people use this a lot for entertaining. They want to go out for a ride on the lake sure. and they want to bring their friends. Yep. And uh, this is just a perfect boat to do that in. What sort of power is back here under the under the hatches, Tom? This has um, a Merc Cruiser 454. Okay. Nice moderate power, about 320 horse. Mm -hmm. The boat cruises at about 45 miles an hour. Wow. And uh, That's really just tough. a just a wonderful boat. Yeah, it's a beauty. It's a beauty. How many boats do you build a year, Tom? In general, is there like 10 or 12 or 20? No, we build two boats a year. Two boats a year. Yep. Okay. All right. And again, it comes back to that all custom, right? All custom work, and we do uh, restoration work as well. We usually do one or two restorations a year, mm -hmm. which uh, occupy a lot of our time. Oh, yeah, right. And uh, and two, two boats a year is just about perfect. Yeah, well, this one came out beautiful. Well, thank you. Well, here's a great boat at uh, the New Hampshire show, owned by Dick Bunicell. It's a 15-foot lineman. Right. It's an old one, right, Dick? 1955. 1955, yeah. Now, how did you uh, come in to get this boat, Dick? It was a graduation present when I graduated high school in oh, 1958. You're kidding me? Nope. Oh my God. My father so bought it, it for long. me. You've had it that long. Yep. And uh, had you, have you had to do some refurbishment along the way? Well, well just maintenance primarily. Okay. Um, as a teenager, it, it, when I, we originally bought the boat, it had a 35 horse motor on it. Yeah. And as a teenager, I, of course, I couldn't get the throttle far enough forward oh, right, for right, obvious right. reasons. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we, it was in the uh, Plymouth Bay area. Uh -huh. We pulled lobster pods with it, we fished with it, uh, I chased girls with it. Uh, oh, yeah. All the things that a teenager would do with a boat that was pretty fast. <laughs> That's a long and time. Then, uh, These old boats had some interesting details, like if I look at this this anchor locker up here, it's got, a, it's got an anchor actually etched into the, into the wood. Well, that's just all the way through for provide ventilation. Yes. So your line's yeah. dry. That's an interesting detail. It's got a big windshield. So that's nice. Keeps you dry. That was an extra. Oh, that was an extra. <laughs> okay. And uh, plywood decks? Yes, it's all plywood with the oak, with oak, um, oak, with oak frame. Oak, yeah. And a nice simple layout there. Seating for two in the front. And yeah. then uh, you go back to a bench seat there in the back. You got it. Yeah. And the motor on here, is that... Uh, what year is that? 1955 also. The same year as the boat. Same year as the boat. Alan, you brought an interesting boat to the show today. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, thank you. I made this boat myself and star well. started in November of 2007 uh -huh. uh, with some kit plan boats, oh uh, but we modified it uh, to our own liking uh -huh. and uh, we fiberglassed the side of it and the, the uh, all the interior and bow and stern are mahogany uh, stained in different colors uh, it has a 1966 mercury engine on it which yeah. has totally been restored oh wow uh, oh. it goes about 37 miles an hour on a calm day uh -huh. um, it, it floats well is it a pretty light boat How, what kind of yes weight yes it is uh, I honestly don't know what the weight is because I built it myself yeah. in, in stages yeah. uh, but it's it's uh, easy to pull up on a trailer, and and primarily I use it in the evenings to putt around the lake. And oh yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh, I was just looking at the instrument panel here. It looks like you've got a complete set of instruments. Yes, sir. Uh, and they they all work from the speedometer and uh, the uh, RPMs. Uh, we have a master switch so that reminds me uh, with a light. It reminds me to turn the battery off. Oh, that's good. Uh-huh. Bilge pump <laughs> of the works. Well, Phil, uh, you brought an interesting boat here to the uh, New Hampshire Boat Show today, didn't you? Uh, yes, thank you. It's a 1928 Chris Craft uh, Cadet uh -huh. that's been uh, heavily modified. Oh. It uh, lengthened it two feet out the stern. 
Okay. I bought the boat as a, as a wreck. It didn't okay. have any hardware, didn't have any running gear. It was just a hull. Just a hull, yeah. So I decided to uh, make it into a better boat. Yeah. There's plenty of cadets out there that I didn't feel I was uh, sacrificing anything. Right, right. So you made a custom. I made a custom boat. I, I like the rear cockpit design because it's a much, uh, much gentler on your back. You're right. right. And I have ride. chronic back pain, so it helps. Oh yeah. What did you put for power in here, Phil? It's got a 1963 uh, Corvette. Uh -huh. uh, that's a 350 uh, small block Chevy. Okay. And what sort of performance do you get out of that? Uh, we, we, well, we just uh, GPSed it yesterday. We just put it in the water for the first time yesterday. Uh huh. And we probably have the wrong prop. Yeah. We have too small a prop, but with the right prop, it'll probably do just under 50 miles an hour. Wow. Yesterday I was doing 38 with, with a GPS. Wow. That's a beautiful boat. Thank you. Very unusual boat at the, uh, at the show, owned by Ron Margie. Ron, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ron, this is uh, one of the larger crafts here today. Can you tell us a little bit about the background of this boat? This was a former U.S. mail boat out of Alton Bay and the Wolfboro side of Lake Winnipesaukee. Uh -huh. it's, it came to this lake in 1941, okay. and it delivered mail for 31 years. Wow. Uh, it got put up in dry dock uh, for 10 years. The first 10 years I was on the lake, I'd never seen it. Okay. Uh, I'd heard about it and uh, I went and purchased it and uh, many years later after all the repairs that had to be done to it, it's back afloat and uh, it's a very, very comfortable uh, way of life and living aboard a craft like this. Oh, yeah. it, it gives you everything you need. How many foot did you say this was? This is 45 feet. 45 feet. What's the beam? It's a fairly narrow beam on it. It's 12 feet. Yes, 12 it is feet. narrow for the length. Yep. And what kind of power does it have? It has a single Chrysler Majestic 160 horsepower, which is plenty. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay. And what do you got? A three blade, three blade prop? Four blade prop? A three, I have a 24 24 blade propeller yeah. uh, with a two and a two and a half to one reduction. Now with this hull shape, it looks like it would cruise right along with fairly minimal wake, I would guess, right? Yes, yeah. yes. It was designed to cut through the water at about, uh, <coughs> well, I run at about 1800 RPM, mm -hmm. which is about 10 miles an hour. Okay. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's all you need. Well, here's another proud boat owner at the New Hampshire Boat Show, <laughs> Steve Perkins. Steve, you've got a really interesting boat down here, don't you? Yeah, I guess so. Um, so this is a 1928 uh, Chris Craft uh, Model 1, 22 foot. Okay. And uh, it's a very original boat. Um, What's the beam on this, Steve? This thing looks really narrow. About, I think it's about 6'5", six 6'5", five, six five or 6'8". Six oh, okay. Uh, I've never really measured it, to be honest, but mm -hmm. it fits in a fairly narrow slip boathouse. Yeah. Hey, and how long uh, have you had it? Well, so it's been in our family since 1936. Uh -huh. um, bought it used from uh, the Downing Brothers in Alton Bay. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm pretty sure it spent its entire uh, life in Alton Bay. Oh, um, yeah. It's all a freshwater so, boat. Yeah. And it's, uh, did it didn't have to do much restoration. I, I'm, I'm focused so on the it, cockpit it up was, there. Uh, really nice. yeah. It was refinished once in its life um, really? back in about 1979. Yeah. And uh, it was quite a family project. Oh, I bet it was. Uh, it spent his entire life in a, in a boathouse, so the finish had darkened quite a bit. But the wood is is every piece of wood is original. Nothing's oh, ever been replaced on it. Wow. That's has the amazing. original upholstery. It does it really. Has the original uh, engine, which is a, a Chrysler Royal. Chrysler uh, Royal. Head. How many uh, cylinders is that? Steve? Six cylinders. Six cylinders. Eighty-two yeah. horsepower. Eighty-two horsepower. Yeah. Yeah, works works hard. Original uh, engine, boy, that's really something. Yeah, and then it has a uh, this original crow top, convertible top, which uh, was restored. Oh, I noticed that. By Vince Bober. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of years ago. That's kind of unusual, isn't it? These and, days. And if you want, we'll sign you up for uh, the hardware polishing job in the spring. Oh, that's really? all. Oh, this okay. is all uh, what they call German silver. So oh. it's a an alloy of uh, I think bronze and nickel. Uh -huh. Solid, and uh, so it turns brown over time. I see. If you don't work on it, 
So. All right. Well, we're focused on it right now, and it's uh, it's really looks good. Someone yeah. did a good my, job. My my son that. worked pretty hard on it this he week. Did, so he did a great yeah, job. I got I got good for, good help these days. This is an interesting boat from the New Hampshire uh, boat shop in Meredith, and it's owned by uh, Robert. Robert, how are you today? Very good. Robert, can you tell us a little bit about your boat? It's a 1952 EM White. It was built in Old Town, Maine. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a lap strike utility uh, uh -huh. with an outboard motor. Yeah. And it was built uh, by a competitor to Old Town Canoe. All right. And uh, Old Town and EM White were building these small boats because yeah. they had the, the skills in their canoe building yes. shops to build a lap strike boat. I and they're that. Yeah. very handy boat, uh, easy to build, easy to take care of, and it was nice riding boat so they this style you see very often the Lymans are almost all the same technology they're lap straight with a steam bent frames yeah. a lot of mahogany trim yeah the idea was to keep them light so that they would ride nice and yes. these were originally built to have twin engines because the engines of the day weren't really powerful enough to push a 19 foot boat right you had like 35s so, maybe right? yeah or, a pair of 35s yeah. would have been put on this uh, for simplicity we've taken them off and we put this 50 on here oh yeah and we get about 30 miles an hour with it uh, 50 horse <laughs> yeah and it'll run all day on six gallons of gas so we like that a lot oh that's so. nice now, did you have to put much work into it to I actually it? found this pretty much in this condition it was really? in storage in a barn and many years and it was pretty dirty but it was in really remarkable condition uh, we painted it yeah. and we put some bottom paint on it and cleaned it up and we've been using it uh, every chance we get ever since on uh, Winnipesaukee and Squam Lake and the Merrimack River. Yeah. Well that's an interesting steering wheel and instrument panel you've got here. Is that all original? That's a Wilcox Crittenden factory steering wheel. Um, because it had twin engines it's got a uh, an extra set of key ignition on the dash which we left there to right, right, fill the right. holes. I see that. Yeah. So uh, but it's basically uh, pretty simple. It has just a uh, vacuum powered spinometer and mm -hmm. and uh, searchlight and um, that's about it. You know that's it's a, pretty basic. That's a beauty. So rides real nice. We can put six or seven people in it and take it for a ride and yeah. it uh, handles really well. It's easy to take care of. Yes painted so it's easy to fix if you ding it up right, um, right. it's easy to keep it nice yeah, yeah. That's uh, so a lot of fun well here's another participant in the new hampshire show michael turner michael you brought an interesting boat to the show today thanks very much this is a como italy built committee lakes racer mm -hmm. it's one of two uh, in existence the other one being in italy and it's part of a small company that is uh, an artisanal builder of all mahogany and then also fiberglass hull with wood deck uh, power boats. Right, okay. Small boats from uh, roughly 21 feet up to 34 feet. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, yeah, considered to be pretty much an exotic. It yes. uses American power. Yeah. Uh, the Italians love stern drives also yeah. considering shaft to be the old technology yeah. Yeah. so it's a, it's a high performance bottom yeah and uh, uh, is it a stern drive or a jet it's a stern drive it is a stern yeah drive. it's okay. a Merc Cruiser. Uh, it's a 496 ho motor yeah and it'll do about 65 it's 425 horse uh, and it's a bravo 3 out drive so yeah. it's very manageable yeah that's it's not a wild boat it's right. a boat uh, most people who would like a distinctive uh, you know Gorgeous Italian speedboat can handle. So is this uh, wood over fiberglass? The whole? No, it's completely wood constructed. It's it is. cold molded. Okay, right. Three layers of mahogany yeah. on the sides of the hull, the yeah. top sides, and the bottom is a single full stem to stern panel of marine plywood on either side of the keel. Okay. So it's uh, you'll also notice there are no screw bungs in the sides. Right. It's cold molded using vacuum. Yes. bagging yes. and also clamps yes. and it's uh, very lightweight as yeah. a result and yeah. strong yeah it, uh, it's around 3600 pounds and for a 24 foot boat with a like a 1200 pound motor that's a pretty lightweight boat that's beautiful well here's an interesting boat uh, in the water today at the boat show owned by Barbara Jean hello Barbara hello how are you just great Barbara Jean um, can you tell us a little bit about the boat you have here today Sure, this is a 1960 Chris Craft Commander, uh -huh. and it's 32 feet long. Uh -huh. And how long have you had it? 
a really long time. A really long time. Since the fall. Yeah. But before that, it belonged to a family for many, many years. They oh, it bought did. it in 1960. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, this is really nice. Now, any idea what, uh, obviously it's wood, but any idea what kind of wood it's made out of? It's got teak on the back, uh -huh. and the rest is mahogany. Oh, the rest is mahogany, yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. Barbara Jean, we're looking at the cockpit here. It looks like a lot of uh, original instrumentation up here at the helm. It's all original, the original motors uh -huh. as well. Yeah. Original bottom. So you get dual, bottom. dual engines in this. Dual engines. Yeah. 286, I believe. Yeah. And you got a couple of seats there. One we do. One for the and well, one for the passenger. And it uh, looks like an all wood sole here, huh? It is, it's teak. Teak, wow, oh, that's nice. Now how's the, how's the maintenance on a boat like this? Uh, is it okay if you keep up with it or? Absolutely. Yeah. They're really not as hard to keep up as long as you take care of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The best thing you can do is probably a cover. A cover, yeah. For I've heard that a lot today, a cover or a boathouse, something like that. Keep it all the sun, I guess, right? Exactly, because yeah. yeah. it dries it out and then things begin to deteriorate. And you use this boat on the lake here, Lake Winnipesaukee? I live on it about four days a week. Oh, do you? I wow. like it seven days a week, but four is a good start. Four is a good start, yeah. Well, here's a pretty boat uh, at the show. It's a, it's a Highliner. And Randy, can you tell us a little bit about your boat? Sure. Well, it's a 1958 Highliner. Uh -huh. um, it's one of the only Massachusetts builders. They're built in Ipswich, Mass. All and right. the, the marina is still there. It's Fernald's Marine. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had leased a building in West Newbury that is actually still standing mm -hmm. where the boat is, uh, where, the, where he built the boats. Wow. And they built from 56 to about 62, mm -hmm. and which was, you know, that was the end of wooden boats. Yeah. And uh, they then sold the name Highliner. Um, to another company that actually started building fiberglass boats. Okay, so this is one of the original ones there. This is plywood construction, right? Yes, it's mahogany plywood on the bottom uh -huh. and the sides. The bottom's double planked and then fiberglassed right okay. from the factory. And okay. then the top side is all solid mahogany. Oh, that's pretty, that's pretty. Now, uh, is there a story behind you? Can you, are you getting this boat? Did this uh, fall into your lap? Well, if you, you see, to... if you look inside, there's some pictures of our family. Okay. Uh, and this was our family boat. Was it really? My father bought it used in 1960, and we had it up till 1972. Um, our whole family learned how to ski behind it, um, and you know, then he eventually succumbed to the, you know, needing to get the fiberglass boat and right. got rid of the wood. Right. And then years in uh, the history of the boat show here, this this is the 40th year of the show. I've been to the show every single year, even as a kid, um, as wow. mostly as an observer, but recently as a participant. Yeah. And this was really the only old boat that I ever wanted, but I could never find one. So yeah. I went and restored uh, many, many early 60s, late 50s fiberglass boats. Mm -hmm. Finally found this boat. It was a great example of what we had um, from the original owner in Somerville, Mass. And I went to buy it. My brother talked me out of it. Mm -hmm. That was uh, definitely a life regret. So I went right. back a year later to buy it from the gentleman. He remembered me. And he said he couldn't sell it to me because he just sold it. Oh, I said, well, tell me the name of the fellow who just bought it, and I'll buy it from him. Yeah. He refused to sell it. He was in Virginia. Mm -hmm. If we skip ahead five years, I saw another Highliner for sale called The Gentleman, mm -hmm. and it was in Wisconsin. Well, it turns out that it was actually, it's actually this boat again, oh. the one that I saw in Somerville. Mm -hmm. And he had moved to Virginia, restored the boat, then moved to Wisconsin, decided he wanted to sell it. At that point, he wanted a lot of money for it. I decided it was out of my price range, so I let it go. Now, if we skip ahead another 10 years, mm -hmm. I, still looking for a Highliner, I found one. Uh, I didn't find one, and I, 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 but I moved, and I moved to the next town to where the boats were built. So I'm sitting in my house thinking, it's the only old boat I ever wanted. I'm living in the next town to the factory. It's the boat we had as a family. I yep. have to find one. Yeah. So I wrote letters to everybody in the Antique Boat Club who had listed as a high, who listed owning a Highliner to see if they'd be interested in selling their boat. I got a call from a gentleman in Maryland who said he had one with no motor and he'd be interested in selling it. 
but when he sent me the pictures, it was the exact same boat that I had seen 15 years ago in Somerville in the garage. Wow. So I followed this boat from Somerville to Virginia to Wisconsin to Maryland, mm -hmm. and now it has come back to where it's now residing literally seven miles from where it was originally built. Well, here's another unique boat at the New Hampshire show. It's owned by John Burke. Hi, John. Hi, how are you? Good. John, this is a really pretty boat you got here. Can you tell us a little bit about it? What year and model and that sort sure. of thing? It's a 1967 Century Coronado. Uh -huh. It's got a, a, a 440 Chrysler uh, engine with dual cord carburetors. It'll do about uh, 55 miles an hour. Wow. It's African mahogany wood. Yeah, it, was, it was designed by Richard R. Beebe for Century Boats and he came up with a newer concept of the vinyl decking instead of the mahogany, the, right. the, the raised tow boards, those black tow boards you see, yeah. uh, but mixing the chrome with the mahogany and the vinyl to yes. give it a different, fresher look. Yes. The bucket, the bucket seats release and swivel, both oh, of them, oh, they do. and you okay. can reverse them so you can observe a skier. That was the reason for the reverse uh, seat there. Yeah, I see the um, ski ring right there in the center. Exactly. And with that engine, it had plenty of power to tow uh, tandem. Oh, yeah. yeah. And how did you come into the boat, John? Uh, actually, uh, when I was a kid up here, my family doctor owned this boat, uh -huh. and he kept it since 1967 when he purchased it new. Oh yeah. And I think uh, we purchased it around 1999 from him, uh -huh. and so we got to be, have a great experience with it when we were kids, and I was fortunate enough to be able to purchase it later. Jeez, that's a lucky find, isn't it? Thank you. Very that's lucky. That's a jewel. When very you got lucky. it, uh, it was in pretty good shape? It's in great shape. It was always well maintained. So yeah. it's all original. Um, we did reupholster and revinyl uh, a few years back, and we have had it re chrome. But aside from that, the, the hull, the wood, the bottom, the engine, everything is original. That's a pretty, pretty boat. Thank you. Well, Dennis, we've had a great time at the, at the show here today. It's been a beautiful day. We've seen some really interesting boats. Um, from Chris Crafts to Garwoods to, uh, you know, Centuries. Is there anything you'd like to add before we wrap up today? Well, we just want to thank everybody for being here in particular, and you especially, so that you can show people beyond our influence right here mm -hmm. what this hobby is all about. Mm -hmm. And along those lines, I would say that we, uh, we hope that uh, there's enough interest maybe uh, uh, culminated after this effort that they might want to join right. and you can do that in a couple of different ways you can do it with our website necacbs.org mm -hmm. or just go to the national site which is acbs.org either way you can become a member in New England in particular you have to be part of both but uh, <laughs> right. we'd love to have anybody okay great. all right thank you Dennis all right thank you for being here